few months ago, I roasted some bad Facebook posts and showed you how to fix them. And now let's go to LinkedIn. And just like before, I'm roasting posts from businesses and organizations that are good at what they do, but might need some help with their social media. FYI, they all volunteer to be roasted, and let's get started with the Cooperative Credit Union Association. And the CCUA is a regional trade organization that serves credit unions, and I do like a lot of their LinkedIn posts, but let's look at this post right here. Announcing our new partnership with Digital Align Inc. to help bring customized digital transformation solutions to credit unions by enhancing member and staff experiences while increasing revenues and margins through streamlined operational efficiency and productivity without adding additional staff. And there are a bunch of hashtags at the end. Okay, let's start with the writing. Actually, that's all we have is writing. There are no images, there's no video, there's nothing. So the writing better be amazing, but it's not. First of all, this paragraph here, it's all just one sentence. I had to take three breaths to get through the whole thing. And super long sentences are hard to read. Even worse, this long sentence is full of corporate speak, which is super hard to read. Now in general, you wanna aim for a sixth or seventh grade reading level because people's brains absorb simple language better. And it doesn't matter how smart you are. So I wanted to see what grade level this post was. So I put it into Hemingway Editor, which is a free app that tells you the grade level. And this post came back at postgraduate. And for all these big words, it says very little, like digital transformation solutions. Well, digital is obvious because we're partnering with Digital Align, so we don't need to say that. And transformation, everything we buy should be transformative. We don't buy products or services to stay the same. And solutions, again, a word we don't need. We buy solutions to problems. So many companies could say they offer digital transformation solutions. I could say that in my own agency too. Enhancing member and staff experiences. Yes, when you buy something, it's to enhance some type of experience. Streamlined operational efficiency and productivity. And when you streamline, you really are making things more productive and efficient. And yes, while there is a nuanced difference between productivity and efficiency, we don't have to say both, just choose one. We don't have to split hairs on this. But even if I just simplify the language, I still don't know what Digital Align does or what this partnership is. So I go on Digital Alliance website, and ironically, right at the top of Digital Alliance homepage, the face of the woman here is exactly how I feel trying to make sense of this post. But then I scroll down and I see they automate things. Okay, got it. And then I go on CCUA's website and I see that Digital Align is listed as a business partner to help CCUA's member credit unions. Okay, I think I have enough now to write a post. Let's try something like this. If you want to boost revenue and productivity at your credit union, check out Digital Align Inc. They're our newest business partner. With Digital Align, you can use automations to do the tedious work so your staff can use their time where it matters most. And according to Hemingway Editor, this is now at a seventh grade reading level, which is significantly better, but I think it could still be even better better than that. Hemingway Editor says that this last sentence is hard to read, and really this is the best I can think of, so if you can think of an even simpler way to say this, please put in the comments below because we can all learn from each other. Now let's go to the hashtags. On LinkedIn, it's recommended you have somewhere between three to five hashtags at the end of a post when you can. And really, technically, you could have more hashtags, but it just becomes a matter of aesthetics because a bunch of hashtags look like a lot of junk, so you might as well just choose three to five hashtags that really work. But anyway, adding hashtags will help you get seen by people who follow those hashtags and people do follow hashtags on LinkedIn. And these are people who can certainly be outside of your first degree network or people who are outside of your follower base. And if you're going to use three to five hashtags, then you wanna be picky and choose ones that are most likely going to be followed by your target audience. So it's great that CCUA added hashtags at the end of this post, but are they the right ones? Hashtag credit unions is good. It has a decent following, 9,000 plus followers. Without being so wildly popular, that would be difficult to show up at the top of a hashtag credit unions newsfeed. And I saw that most people posting in hashtag credit unions are in the credit union industry. And one can only assume that the people following hashtag credit unions are also in the credit union industry. But these other hashtags are not going to hit CCUA's target audience and most are too broad. For instance, let's look at hashtag productivity. It has more than 8 million followers. And with 8 million followers, that also means that there are tons of people using hashtag productivity in their posts. So the chances of showing up at the top of a hashtag productivity newsfeed are pretty slim. 
And let's say CCUA's post ended up at the top of the hashtag productivity newsfeed. What are the chances that the people seeing that post from hashtag productivity actually work at a credit union? So I did some research for hashtags that are related to credit unions that are actually being followed on LinkedIn. And there are only four, hashtag credit unions, hashtag credit union, hashtag credit union difference, and hashtag credit unions rock. Now it can't hurt to put all four at the end of a post, understanding that these first two hashtags are gonna serve a whole lot better than the last two. Although these last two are probably followed by diehard credit union fans, so who knows, there might be some good that comes out of that. So now our post looks like this with the new hashtags at the bottom. Now the other thing is that we should have an image or a video or a link or anything to go with this text. Posts that are just text perform the worst in news feeds because they pop the least. And if you're a regular on this channel, you know I've talked about the fact that your post competes with all other posts in the newsfeed. So how can your post stand out among the competition in the newsfeed? So I tested what it would look like if we shared a clickable image link to Digital Line's website. And it looked like this, which is horrible. Some words from a testimonial from the Digital Line website cry in front of my PC automatically appear. And by the way, I've learned the hard way that if you share a link like this, you better double check what the words are that appear automatically from the website website because they might not serve you. So that type of image link isn't gonna work. So I'm just gonna put a straight text link at the end of the caption and it's gonna look like this. And then below it, it'd be great if we had a video. We don't have that. So let's go ahead and see if we can find an image instead. And I found this computer image on Canva and added the words do more in less time, which I think would pique people's interest to read the text. Now the entire post looks like this. And FYI, what would have been even more amazing is if we had a picture of one of the CCUA employees pointing to their computer, which has the digital line dashboard on there and they're going, oh, something like that. Cause then you're really adding the human touch to it. So the next time CCUA announces a partnership or they're sharing anything that's kind of intangible, see if they can get one of their team members in the post, obviously with a caption that's also readable. And CCUA, I hope that helped. And now let's move on to our next roast volunteer, Nicole Surrett. She's a breast cancer thriver and wellness coach. And she shares lots of inspiration and wellness tips through her social media, including LinkedIn. And let's look at this post here. Here, Nicole is featuring a cantaloupe cucumber salad as part of a week long summer detox series. And the idea of the series is great. It's educational and our audience would totally eat it up. Get it, eat it up literally and figuratively. Okay, it's like a little funny. Anyway, there are some things to nitpick about this post and let's start with the image. Sometimes the image is what carries the weight of a post and that is definitely the case in this post. And when the image is that important, it's worth taking an extra couple minutes to really make that image pop. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna make the recipe myself and recreate this entire photo. I'm guessing that in addition to the cantaloupe and cucumber, there's also red onion and I think basil. There's no recipe or even an ingredients list in this post, which would have been helpful. And by the way, I am not a professional food photographer, but the tips I'm gonna share can really help with any type of social media post. First, you want the subject of your photo, in this case, it's the cantaloupe cucumber salad, to be the focus. And you wanna minimize as much distracting background as you can. Now in this photo, you see a bit of the table, which really can't be avoided, but you see quite a bit of the glass plate, which we can avoid. When you show more background than you need, it makes your subject look smaller and less important. And in this case, showing this much plate makes the salad look less filling. Okay, so let's start by putting the salad on a smaller plate and I'm choosing a black plate so that the color of the salad really pops. The more contrast we have between the subject and any part of the background, the better. It's also helpful to try out different angles with your social media photos. Personally, when it comes to food, I like seeing food a bit from the side rather than completely overhead. And one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things to do is use portrait mode on my phone. It makes things up front look clearer, things behind look a little blurrier, and that creates depth and it also puts more focus on the front of the subject. And then you can use the photo editing feature on your phone or any free photo editing software on your computer to spiff this up some more. The things I like to play with are contrast because sometimes more contrast is better. Brightness, which makes your photos brighter. Saturation, which makes the reds redder and the blues bluer. It makes all the colors more of that color. And really, I'm gonna use a lot of saturation here because Nicole's cantaloupe looks way better than my cantaloupe. And also sharpness. If you increase the sharpness, it makes you feel more like you're really there. I'm also gonna crop the photo to get rid of some unnecessary background. 
And after playing with all of these, here's the finished photo. Now let's look at the verbiage. Happy Thursday, it's summer detox day four. This cantaloupe cucumber salad is amazing. Using seasonally available ingredients can really make flavors pop. This cucumber is from a friend's garden. Talk about freshness. Fast, fresh, and flavorful is a definite win-win combination for this recipe. And there are a bunch of hashtags at the end. Overall, I like the tone. It's very approachable and still needs some tweaks. Happy Thursday, I'm okay with that here because this is a week long series where there is a specific different post for each day of the week. But I I will tell you, don't say happy Thursday if your post has nothing to do with Thursday. That's just for all y'all out there because it's a pet peeve of mine. I mean, don't do it because it's a pet peeve of mine, but please understand what I'm getting at. Okay, these two other sentences here in the first paragraph are fine, but we do need a period at the end of amazing. In the second paragraph, I wouldn't mention that the cucumber is from a friend's garden because not all of us have friends who have gardens that grow cucumbers. And if you're sharing a tip, you wanna make sure people can do every part of that tip talk about freshness here can also be deleted because we mentioned fresh right afterwards. I'd also rework the post to include the list of ingredients. So now the main part of the post looks like this. Happy Thursday, it's summer detox day four. This cantaloupe cucumber salad is amazing. That's all pretty much the same. Using seasonally available ingredients can really make flavors pop. Simply mix sliced cantaloupe and cucumber with diced red onion and chopped basil. It's fast, fresh, and flavorful, a win-win combination. As for hashtags, we just talked about hashtags in that last roast. So let's use that same strategy to change Nicole's hashtags. And I came up with these. Now the entire post looks like this. Okay, I hope that helped Nicole. And by the way, your recipe is delicious. And for everyone watching, if you're liking what you're seeing so far, I would be so grateful if you would smash that like button because it really does tell YouTube to deliver this video to even more people. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to a completely different industry, and that's media and public relations. And it's Janet Falk who volunteered to be roasted. I will tell you that it took me some time to find something of hers to roast because Janet is a good writer. But then I found a post, I was so happy, and here it is. A networking coach suggested, when you make a referral, indicate that you know the third person very well. You recite that you know their family members, which sport they play, and other aspects of their life. The listener thinks, yes, you do know Pat well. I will trust your judgment and contact Pat. The post seems straightforward. Janet is passing along wisdom from a networking coach on the best way to make a referral. Or that's what I thought. But then I clicked on see more and then saw Janet's next line. I disagree. She disagrees with the advice and then goes on to explain why. And you may have picked up on the problem here. The great majority of people do not click on see more. When people are on social media, they're in scrolling mode and they're just skimming text. The only reason I clicked on Seymour is because I was desperately trying to find something of Janet's to roast since she volunteered for this. If I had not clicked on Seymour, I would have totally missed what Janet was really trying to say. And in this first section of the post, the part that's visible before you click on Seymour, there's nothing that would compel people to click on Seymour because it seems like its own complete thought. So if you have a long post, you can't fit it in just a few lines. Make sure that either the main part of what you want to say is at the top or there's something compelling at the top that would entice people to click on see more. So I'm going to edit this caption with a teaser sentence and I'd also like to make the language a little more concise and a little less formal while staying true to what I believe is Janet's voice. Here's what I have. Have you ever questioned a coach's advice? A networking coach once suggested, when you make a referral, say you know the person very well. You know their family members, which sports they play and other aspects of their life. The listener thinks, you know Pat well. I'll trust your judgment and contact Pat. I disagree. Knowing the details of Pat's personal life doesn't mean you know Pat's ability to solve business problems. Instead, a referral should focus on Pat's success with clients who face similar issues. What do you think? I also tweaked the hashtags at the end, enough said on the hashtags. And yes, we also need an image with this post. I would have loved it if I had seen a picture of Janet looking in the camera as if she's talking straight to her audience. It would just build a connection even more. And it could be something like this, or this, or this and obviously with her face instead of mine. I hope this helped. And now let's move on to our last roast volunteer. And that's Bob Batchelor from Flying Angels. And Flying Angels provides safe transport of medical patients on commercial aircraft with the help of highly trained medical professionals. And on Flying Angels social media, I wanna roast a group of their posts, in particular, their holiday posts. Now I have to admit, I really do like this one from Christmas because that totally works with the Flying Angels brand. But, and this is where I have the problem, all of their holiday posts have the Flying Angels logo. Father's Day, Memorial Day, Juneteenth, 
And really, this is a trap that a lot of us fall into. I've fallen into it. We think we should turn every holiday into a branding opportunity. But I'm sure you've heard it before. This is social media, not sell media. We build our brand through building relationships, especially especially on LinkedIn. So on a holiday, why not just wish people a happy whatever day it is and just let it be? Otherwise, it sounds like happy holidays and remember, we're here when you need us. And I'm sure that's not what Bob intends and I'm sure that's not what we intend, but that's how it can come across. Besides, if the post is coming from your company page, the post is already branded because your company name and logo are right here. Or if the post is coming from your personal LinkedIn profile, let's say Bob is sending the post through his LinkedIn personal profile, he could say, on behalf of Flying Angels, have a happy whatever it is. Or even just skip that part and just say, have a happy whatever it is. And again, just let it be. Let's redo the Memorial Day post because the serious holidays especially should not get extra branding. And if we get rid of the logo here, we can make Never Forget much bigger. And really that's the message with Memorial Day. So let's make that message stand out more. And now the image looks like this. It's a tiny tweak, but sometimes the tiniest tweaks can make a big difference in the message you're really putting out there. And the text here at the top looks great, but you know, with this video the way it's going, I need to mention the hashtags just really briefly. Since Flying Angels is business to consumer, there is a chance that they can get discovered using these broad holiday terms by people who can use their services. However, I would just use these two because this one, hashtag Memorial 2022, has literally zero followers. So it just adds to the clutter. I'd also add a line break between the main text and the hashtags to make it easier on the eyes. So now the completed post looks like this. And if you like these roasts for LinkedIn, you will love my roasts of seven Facebook posts. So check it out right here in the top right corner. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.